he revealed it to those who had childlike faith. And Jesus goes on and he says, in other parts of the Gospels, you must have faith as one of these. When the children came to him and the, and the disciples were saying, Take, to keep them away, keep them away. And he said, no, bro, let them come to me. If you have faith like these, you can enter the kingdom of heaven. If you were looking on Facebook for last week's sermon, it didn't get put up there. I wonder why. Did it work it? No, I put the barrel, this barrel thing in my pocket, and I turned the microphone off. So the whole thing is no sound. I'm very animated, but no sound. <laughs> so it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. And, and I was well. That was this one. I fixed that. This one didn't go on at all. So. But anyhow, God is good. Yes. Amen. We were here. Doesn't matter if anybody else was. We were here. We were here. We were the ones. Yeah, God knows what went on. God is good. Amen. I say that all the time because we've got to remember that. God is good. In every situation, God is good. Today, I'm going to be looking at Matthew chapter 11. Uh, we talked this morning, if you weren't here for a part of Sunday school, I encourage you to be here for Sunday school because there's a lot that you can learn from the Bible and from just the interaction that goes on through the verses. I think it's very important to learn the Bible. So go to with me to Matthew chapter 11. And I'd like to turn your attention today to verses 25 to the end of the chapter. Matthew 11, 11 25 to the end of the chapter. Now prior to this, John the Baptist's followers came to Jesus and said, Are you the one? Are you the one we should be looking for? Or is there someone else? And Jesus was dealing with them and talking with them and reassuring them that, yes, he was the one. And then he was talking about cities that did not repent and how if they didn't repent, it would be easier for Sodom and Gomorrah on that day than to that, for that city. Uh, so he dealt with a lot of things. And then he goes into verse 25, and we're going to read that here today to the end of the chapter. It says, at that time, Jesus said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these, signs, these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to infants. Even so, Father, for, for, all, for it seemed good in your sight. All things were, are delivered to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And he, to, and he to whom the Son will reveal himself. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn it from me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father, thank you for your word. Pray that you would just guide our hearts in it today, minister through it, and be with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus speaking here to them about how God reveals things to those with childlike faith. We talked this morning in Sunday school about how Adam and Eve, prior to the fall and during the fall, they had childlike understanding, which is understandable. We don't know when it happened from creation to the fall. We know it's three chapters in the Bible, but we don't know if it was three days, three years, 30 years. There's even indications in there that we don't know whether Cain and Abel were born at that point or not. Because it's not real specific. And if you look at the Bible in a chronological way, the book of Genesis wasn't the first book written. If you look at a chronological thing, I think Job was the first book that actually was written. 
So you have to look at it that way. And Jesus is saying that we have to have a childlike faith. He didn't, he didn't reveal these things to the wise and the prudent. He was being nice not by saying he didn't reveal them to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the religious people. He revealed it to those who had childlike faith. And Jesus goes on and he says in other parts of the Gospels, you must have faith as one of these. When the children came to him and the, and the disciples were saying, Take, to keep them away, keep them away. And he said, no, bro, let them come to me. If you have faith like these, you can enter the kingdom of heaven. So he says here that he revealed it to infants, those with childlike faith, to believe. See, and I begged the question as I was looking over this. I, I thought to myself, a question of, have I lost that childlike faith? You know, really, we've got to think about those things. Has today's society, with everything that we have, like I said this morning during prayer time, it's pretty, pretty sad when we have to say, I heard about this on Facebook. We have so much technology, so many things in our way, that we can lose, lose sight of our faith. Our faith is bound upon sometimes our technology and not the one that authored the book. But our faith should be geared upon and bound upon God. You see, we can, have, we, we can have infantile faith, and what that means is whatever God says, we believe it, and that settles it. If we know in our heart that God's going to do something, we believe it, and we, and we, and we, and we accept that, and we go on. There's a story that one of my pastor friends told me about a person in his church. Years ago, a year, long time ago now, he was, he was in his 30s and 20s and 30s, and he was part of this church in, I think it was Bluffton, Indiana, I think is where he was at. And um, he had a guy in his church named Louie. Now, Louie was one of these guys that had childlike faith. He'd go and he'd give money wherever. He'd just give money. God said, give money, he'd give money. People need groceries. He'd pull out the stuff out of his cabinets, give them groceries. And he said one time, he said, that was amazing that he had that kind of faith. But he said one time, they were going to have a church picnic. It was in August or September, something like that. And he said, the clouds rolled in. And the pastor said to everybody, well, I don't know if we're going to be able to have the picnic. It's low, it looks like it's going to rain. And he said, well... Louis said, Pastor, just go out there and rebuke it. And they kind of, they kind of, you know, laughed it off. Go out there and rebuke it, laugh it off. So he's like, well, if you're not going to do it, I'm going to do it. So he walked out there and he said, <laughs> he rebuked it, looked up and I rebuke you in Jesus' name. He said, the clouds parted and the sun came out. He said, everyone's mouths just opened up, their tongues hung out. Because that childlike faith, God honored that childlike faith. God honored it. Now, we're all not, not all going to be like Louis. We're, not, we're all not going to be able to, to part clouds and bring the sun out by our faith and all those things, but God desires that kind of faith. That kind of faith. He said that He brought these things, revealed these things to infants. Infants, if you look at an infant, even kids Benjamin's age and my kids' ages, they believe anything you tell them. Don't they? Don't believe anything you tell them. Amy's dad told somebody when they were young like that. He's got a dimple. He told somebody that he was shot in the chin and that was the mark from the bullet. And he believed them. And they believed him. See, you can tell a child anything and they'll believe you. So if you tell them the things of God, they'll believe you. You cultivate that childlike faith. They'll believe you. And that's what God wants from us. A faith that if God says it, we're going to believe it. We're going to believe it. God said that. He said, Jesus said, I've delivered these things to infants, revealed them to infants, those who had that kind of faith. 
He says, Even so, Father, for it seemed good to your, in your sight. All things are delivered to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. God reveals himself to people in different ways. Sometimes in a miracle situation, sometimes through someone else, sometimes through his word. When I pray for someone who doesn't know the Lord or is very new in their faith, I will pray that God reveal yourself to them in a real way. Because God will reveal himself in a real way. You know, we can, we can talk all we want about God. And God can anoint those words. And God can be revealed in those words. But not in every situation is God going to be revealed to someone by our words. Sometimes God is revealed to those by His own words in Scripture. Sometimes God reveals Himself through a miracle situation. God revealed Himself through the Old Testament miracle situations. Parting of the Red Sea. The ark not sinking. You look at all of those things. Miraculous food for 40 years in the desert. God revealed Himself in those ways. Can God still do it today? Absolutely God can still do it today. God isn't bound by space or time or our intellect or our boxes. He can do whatever He wants to do. And if He wanted to, He could walk through those four doors and say, get off the pulpit, Josh, it's my turn. He could do that if He wanted to. If you really want to be really honest, God can do what He wanted. God, but, he, but He chooses to do and chooses to do things the way He does them. We don't know why. Somebody asked me one time, why does God let bad things happen? Why does God let children die? Why does God let abortion continue? Why does God... I don't know. I don't know. But I do know that He has a plan. And I do know that He knows what's going on. And I do know that He understands. And it's for us to just pray that He reveals some of that plan to us. Because sometimes that plan we won't know until we meet Him, or until we see Him, until everything is open to our understanding. You know? Some of us have lost children, loved ones. Some of us have lost uh, spouses, either by avenue of death or otherwise. Some of us have lost a lot of things, and we don't know why. We pray that God reveals it in this life, but if He doesn't, He will reveal it in the next one. You know, and those things... God will reveal in some way, shape, or form, either here or there. He'll reveal them. He says, No one knows the Father except the Son, except the Son will reveal him. Let's see. No one knows the Father except the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. God will reveal the Son, the Son will reveal the Father. We have to be able to to be available to see that revealing. God is in, I'm not going to say God's in everything because He's not in everything. So when you say that, like, well, God's in this piece of wood here. But God is in every aspect of our life. He's in our down sittings and our uprisings and He's in our day and He's in, our, he's in all those things. We just have to be open to Him revealing Himself. You ever get mad at somebody because they're going 25 miles an hour and it's a 55 mile an hour speed zone? Yeah. And there's no way to pass them? And you're sitting there for 10 or 15 minutes before they decide to turn off or pull over or whatever? You often wonder where, if God's in that. What's He keeping you from? Whether it be an accident or whether it be something else? You ever wonder about that? I do. I do. See, things like that, you've you got you to look where God is. 
You've got to think, well, where is God in that? And see, we get all cumbered up. All cumbered up. Those kinds of things, you can be upset about them, angry about them. You can be angry about the fact that you lost a spouse, however you lost them, through, through death or otherwise. You can be angry about how, uh, why your child died or, or whatever. You can be angry about... But God had a plan. I'm not discounting your feelings by any means. But we have to also understand that God has a plan. Feelings are feelings. We're going to have them. We're going to go through that being angry with God because of spouse's death or a spouse being lost or, or a child dying or something. We're going to be angry with God. That's natural. That's normal. Just make sure when you're angry with God, you go to Him with that anger so He can see you through it. That's normal. But when we don't go to God, we get cumbered up. We get cumbered up with feelings and pain and all of these things. And then he says to this, my favorite verse in the whole Bible is the next two verses. Come unto me, all you who are labor and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Let's stop right there. He says, come to me. He doesn't say, I'll come to you. He says, come to me. So when we're angry and we're distressed, Jesus says, come to me. That means we have to come to him. He's not going to come to us. Because I'll tell you what, whenever my kids are upset and I go to them when they don't want me to go to them, it doesn't end well. See, God is not going to come to us because it may not end well. When we're angry with God, if God came to us and tried to comfort us without us being ready, that would fuel the angers in some cases. God says, come to me. All you who labor and heavy burdened, and I'll give you rest. The invitation is there. God has his arms open wide, ready to, to accept us, ready to take our burden, ready to do all of that. Even though we don't understand, he's ready to be there. Even though we're hurt, even though we're angry, even though we're upset, even though all of those things... The, the invitation is still there. Come to me, all you who labor and heavy work. doesn't matter what you're laboring about. You know what's the, you know what's the precious thing of, about my day a lot of times? Uh, my kids get, get angry. And my kids have tempers. I don't know where they got them. I don't got a temper. But they got tempers. But what is the greatest part of that is when they realize and they break and they cry and they come and they get hugged and they, they just lay, get up in my lap and they cry and, they, and I'm able to comfort them but I can't do that before they're ready. God's saying the same thing here. He cannot do that before you're ready. You have to go to Him with all that pain and all that anger and all that fear and all that resentment and all of those things doesn't matter what you're burdened about. He wants you to go to Him. And He says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am weak and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. You ever think about yokes? I know, Ralph, you know what a yoke is. Yoke of oxen. You know what a yoke is. It's not an egg yolk. It's a piece of wood that they would put oxen, strap oxen to and have them pull a wagon or pull a plow or something. That yoke. Our yoke is heavy with resentment, with fear, with pain, with, with, dis, with, dis, with, dis, with discernment of the situations, with turmoil, all of those things. Our yoke is heavy. Our yoke is hard. Our yoke is difficult. Our yoke comes with pain. Our yoke comes with fear. Our yoke comes with bitterness and anger and all those things. Jesus says, take my yoke. 
because it's easy and light. What's Jesus' yoke? What's the fruit of the Spirit? Galatians chapter 5. Let's go there real quick. This is Jesus' yoke. Galatians chapter 5. I'm studying Romans. I'm all over the place I'm studying the Bible here of late. Galatians chapter 5. This is the yoke that Jesus has. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, uh, wait, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. That's Jesus' yoke. What's our yoke? The opposite of that. Our yoke is hatred, sadness, turmoil, impatience, harshness, evil, lack of faith. If you really want to look at it, that's our yoke. Aside from Jesus, that's our yoke. If you put aside Jesus, that's how we live. That's how we live. We live in unforgiveness. We live in meekness. We live in, in uh, hatred. We live in impatience. We live in harshness. And we live in evil. And we live in lack of faith. And we live in uh, unable to control ourselves. We live in those things without Jesus. That's our yoke. That's our yoke. His yoke is easy. And His burden is light. You know why? Because he has love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. If we can get into that, our yoke will be easy. You know, they say, the Bible says, that a merry heart does good like a medicine. A merry heart does good like a medicine. How much do we laugh? I do every morning when I look in the mirror. But how much... How, how much do we laugh? How much do we enjoy life? You know, you ever, you ever think about... Um, I used to always get mad at going down the road and you know, people that are farmers and they'd drive real slow and look at their fields and see how their fields are doing. I'd get mad at that because I'd be like, you know, I need to be somewhere. But these are the people we need to emulate. They're going slow. They're taking it in. They're living life. You know? You ever, you ever just walk around and just look at the flowers? Smell them? That's joy, peace. No, we're too busy running here and there and everywhere. Right? Got to get to work. Got to get home. Got to get to the store. Got to get to the library. Got to get... You know... That's our life. Did you ever, did, did, did you, have you ever done that? Just walked through a meadow or a piece of property with flowers and just looked at the flowers and just run your hands over the flowers? You ever done that? I've done it once. Once in my life. I've walked through meadows but nothing tall enough to do that. But, you know, we need to take it slow. Live life. That's what Jesus is saying here. Just live life. Live it in peace and joy and all the fruits of the Spirit. You see, we, we so much get so cumbered with things. And Jesus has come to me. Have a bad day at work? Go to Jesus. You know? You have, a, you know, you have problems with co-workers? Brenda, don't take it out on Wayne. Go to Jesus. You know? You're having problems with the grandkids? Go to Jesus. Having problems with the kids? Go to Jesus. Right? <coughs> Jesus will fix it. Jesus will work it out. Jesus will work it out. You know? God is good. Amen? Live life. You know, and I know there's things going on in 
different people's lives in this building. I understand that. I, I see Facebook too. I understand that. But live life. Look for the better in it. Look for the best in it. There was a person that I saw last Monday and I shared a little bit along these lines last Monday at the nursing home. This person's husband is in the nursing home, been at Prairie View for a long time, not doing too well. She broke her leg. And so now she's in Prairie View healing. She was talking to me about how difficult it was. And I said, you got to look at it this way. I said, you now you get six weeks with your husband. Uninterrupted with the love of your life. Look at it that way. And that brought joy then. Because she was looking at it like, now I can't go home. I'm going to have to go home. And when I get done six weeks, I've got a lot of work to do because now I'll have six weeks not being home and all these things. But I said, look at it this way. You get six weeks with your husband. Uninterrupted. And he's the love of your life. So you'll get to be with him for six weeks to make sure he's getting what he needs and all these things. I said, look at it that way. You see, you take one situation and you can flip a coin on it and you can see the, the better part of it. You see? Having problems with coworkers, getting angry about it, flip it over and say, well, maybe they don't know Jesus. Maybe I need to be a better light. You see? We can always shine it back on us. And that'll make our life much lighter. Much lighter. So, Try that. Try making a habit in doing that. Because if you do that, your life will be just so much easier. So much easier. Does it make sense? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and then you have Him for us. Father, thank You for today. Minister to us today through Your Word. Lord, may Your Spirit be round about us. Help us, Lord, to come to you in our time of need, in our time of uh, distress or fear, and even in, or even in our time of worship and triumph and victory. Lord, help us come to you. Lord, and help us to, Lord, be those that you'd want us to be. Minister to us, Lord, and bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Even in the distress, praise your Savior all the day long. For He's with you. He's with you. Like I said, just look for Him. Just look for Him in your daily life. He's in every situation. Just got to find Him. God bless you this week. May His Spirit be around about you this week. May you grow closer to Him this week than you were last, last week. Get into your scriptures. Allow God to work in your life and in your heart. Read your Bibles. God bless you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.